What is up everyone? It's Jamie here from Upload and today we are checking out Crunch Element VR. Now this is a really intriguing VR shooter. Uh, it's an infiltration based game so it's not exactly a stealth game. You're kind of meant to break into bases and kill everyone and it could be quiet if you want or it could not be quiet. But uh, one of the big things in the game is destructibility. So what we're doing here at the start is we are in our kind of arsenal area. I've just picked up two explosives as you saw. One of them was a wall charge. Uh, I'm now kitting out my arsenal with some guns. I don't know why there's white flashing going on, but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, getting a pistol, you get four slots uh, in your inventory to put in, and then you pull the lever, and you see your level. So, the first thing that is important to do in Crunch Element VR is check out your surroundings. So, every level in the game has you taking out every enemy you can find. Um, and once they kind of know where you are, they'll come gunning for you and you can die pretty easily. So it's really important to execute, you know, a, a good strategy as it were. Um, now, one of the major features of the game is being able to blow up every wall that you find, um, as you're about to see. So before uh, I hit the charge, I'll just tell everyone that this is very much an early access sort of alpha level of the game right now. But uh, here we go. So yeah, I've just blown a massive wall in the, uh, a massive hole in the wall rather, um, and now I've given myself like a good place to kind of snipe from with my uh, assault rifle. Um, the charge will have taken out a couple of the enemies as well, which is always handy. Now, uh, as I was saying before, yeah, this is an alpha version of the game, and a lot of the enemy AI is still to be really tweaked. In fact, the game is in Kickstarter right now. Uh, will be till about early February, I think. Uh, looking for around ten thousand dollars. Um, and the developer is hoping to raise that kind of money to, you know, improve uh, the AI and things like that. So, um, once you've done that level, it's just straight onto a new level, new environment. Uh, the game's going to have lots of procedural uh, elements so that you can kind of have as much unlimited fun as you want. Um, getting the white flashing again there, that's very strange. But I really, really like Crunch Element uh, from what I've played so far. It, it is very, very... Uh, primitive in the state it's in right now. The enemy AI is not that great, but like I said, it's a very early version and I'm really hoping uh, that develop, uh, developer Blackbox, I think it is, uh, pick up and improve on that element before the early access release. So there's a Desert Eagle. Oh, yep, just finished that guy off pretty easily. That has a really nice ring to it, that Desert Eagle. A lot of the weapon handling in this feels great, actually. Kind of reminded me almost of Boneworks. The reloading is actually quite realistic as well, quite Boneworks-y. Uh, obviously not quite the physics powerhouse that game is, not quite the visual powerhouse that game is. Um, but I think a really interesting play on some of the stealth that works so well in VR. Oh, and also, as you've just seen, uh, you can climb any wall in the game. Or, n not any wall in the game, sorry. Some surfaces you can't climb, but uh, that's great because you can get to the roof very easily. Blow that up if you want to. Use a red barrel to blow something up if you want to. I didn't choose to. Uh, again going to use this to uh, get a kind of like sniper's nest going, if you can call it that. I wouldn't know. I'm not a military tactician type person. Uh, but yeah, great weapon feel in the game. Uh, I, I went with this weapon more often than not because it just felt really good to fire, uh, fire using two hands. So yeah, as you can see there, blowing up this wall, I think even might have sent a chunk of this debris off and hit that guy that killed him or it might have been the radius of the explosion that killed him but either way just a really fun kind of sandbox feature that lets you feel really kind of agenty and, and slick in VR basically and here I am trying to clear out some rooms I also got that guy yep got him too so uh, to reload yeah you have to press a button on your weapon holding hand to eject your magazine uh, push the clip in and then pull back um, and that does a really nice job of feeling quite authentic in a game that isn't, you know, massively authentic looking, but kind of gets the, the job done, if you know what I mean. There we go. That was mission, I want to say that was like mission six or something like that. Um, just moving straight on to another level. Uh, it's that important to say that the first level I showed in this, I actually knew what it looked like. The next two levels, so the one you just saw and the one you're about to see, I actually didn't know, so I'm kind of going in blind here. 
Uh, kicking up again, this time I picked a sniper rifle and an Uzi. Pull in the lever. Okay, so yeah, this is this is interesting because as the game is progressing, and again, I've only seen a handful of the missions, and it's coming out in early access first, so there's only going to be a handful of missions at first. Um, you, the level design gets more elaborate. So here, I had two separate buildings, but obviously, as you see, once I walked in, I realized that this is actually something of an underground complex, and so the kind of rules of blowing up a building and then just running through and killing whoever I want, they kind of change a bit because obviously I can't blow my way through the floor. You die pretty easily in the game, um, and if you die you have to restart the level over again, so it's important to have like a lot of uh, caution, um, make sure you're checking your corners, like I didn't do there, because again I'm not a military tactician. And obviously I packed a sniper rifle thinking if there are any guys outside it would probably be best to take them out using that, but then it turns out there was no one outside and I had to do all my killing inside. Because the game has that kind of in-depth reload system, uh, you can see I've uh, given a little damage there, there's, there's no uh, rebounding health meter as it were. Um, because the reloading is pretty intense in the game, what I ended up doing was kind of throwing away my weapons there and just relying on the one weapon to kill as many people as quickly as possible and then when I was left with that one weapon I decided to start reloading. So yeah, quite interesting strategies that you can apply here. Quite like blind firing, especially when you're, uh, when you're near death. It has a kind of like pang of desperation to it which is quite fun. Oh, really nearly dead. Oh, I got him. Look at me. Oh. Uh, when you throw when you throw guns, they kind of go out into the air. They don't just fall on the ground, which is quite a nice way of you know preventing that frustrating thing where you drop something on the floor and then you have to end up bending down to pick it up. Okay, so what we can do now is return to the game's main menu just to show you a bit of that. So again, this is an early alpha state, lots of the stuff isn't actually working yet. There's a, um, as you can see there, there's a store coming soon, so hopefully that'll be some new weapons and things like that. Got a little firing range here, so you can try out any of the guns that you use in the levels. Uh, and then this is actually really cool, this is one of the coolest things in the game. Yeah, you just generate a building like that, and then you can use uh, explosives to try and bring it down. Uh, it's important to note, as you're about to see, that Actually, only the charges, from what I've used so far, actually blow up walls. This grenade isn't going to blow up a wall, as you'll see. Yep, nope. Um, but the technology powering the um, the explosions, uh, the explosions, the explosions, and the demolition is actually really impressive. Um, I can't wait to see this applied to some of the bigger levels in the game. Maybe with some different objective types as well. I think the game could really use that. But yeah, simple as that. Okay, before we leave, I think... Oh, I also tried this, but I don't know what this is. It's just a, a thingy. I'm sure lots of you are looking at the screen screaming at me for not knowing what the heck this thing is, but I ended up just throwing it and it didn't... Yeah, it didn't explode, so it, it's a pass in my book. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go... I thought we'd go into the last level just to give you a, another little look. Uh, remember, this is on Kickstarter right now. It's going to be on Kickstarter till the end of uh, February. Uh, no, till the start of February. Um, and I think it's about fifteen bucks to pledge to uh, reserve a copy of the game. Essentially, uh, this time I'm loading up the old sniper rifle again, and I remember that it's actually a good time to use the sniper rifle in this one. So again, not every surface in the game can be climbed, so I tried to do it there, but that doesn't work. Um, and we're gonna take a little step back here. You can see I got a little damage because the walls, the electric fences around you will damage you if you step into them. Uh, nice clean headshot. Now, control-wise, the game isn't completely perfect right now. Uh, some of the climbing can be a little uh, finicky because you might end up accidentally grabbing an item while you're climbing up. Sometimes um, 
I would kind of lose grip on buildings even though I thought I had a perfectly good grip. I also couldn't climb these railings here. I don't know if that was an intentional thing. And as you can see, I accidentally picked up one of my charges. Um, so I couldn't pull myself on top here, unfortunately. But I've just planted that charge and I thought, well, why not try some sort of Mission Impossible style uh, breach clear. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, definitely needs a little uh, work on the climbing side, I think. Okay. Those enemies are really weird enemy design, kind of like fighting an army of giant Lego. Um, but yeah, they're not the smartest in the bunch, as you can see. It'd be great. I'd love to play this with, you know, better AI. I'm really hoping that's something that gets worked on. Uh, going through that's I mean that's that's such a problem for a lot of indie VR games in general right so you think about games like Aspire 1 um, really great level design really great mechanics and then it just kind of starts to fall apart a little once it comes to counting on the enemy to do something and be challenging right um, and I think that's something that lots of indie developers are really pushing up against right now and I think this is it's true of this and I'm hoping that um, they come through with something you know, uh, better than what they've got right now. Because the core game is so fun and gives you such a slick feeling. Um, and it's got so much potential as like this procedurally generated, revisit it over and over again. I mean, think about elements like co-op or multiplayer or anything like that. It could be so much fun. Uh, but yeah, no, that was Crunch Element VR. Quick look. Thanks very much for joining me. Uh, I'm going to wave here, but I was trying to wave behind the menu and couldn't see my hands, as you can see. So I'll give you a proper goodbye here. Goodbye. All right. Um, this is Jamie. Please stay tuned for other Upload VR content. And that's all I can think to say right now.